Welcome to another episode of Grammar is Power. In this video, we'll study parallelism. Let's jump right in. It's not often the case that the definition of a term is essentially the rule. Parallelism is the use of the same grammatical structure for two or more parts of a sentence that are similar in function. The rule? Use the same grammatical structure for two or more parts of a sentence that are similar in function. In other words, make your sentences parallel. Let's look at some examples to clarify this concept. Hank is the subject, and he completed three actions. If we break it down this way, we see that he bumped his head, lost his bearings, and met a strange man. The three compound verbs follow the same pattern. Action verb, adjective, and direct object. They are parallel. Man has an extra adjective, the article A, but it's necessary for the noun man and doesn't count, so to speak, in the structure. In this sentence, there are three direct objects, reading, fencing, and to sleep in late. To sleep doesn't match the ing's of the other two objects, so the sentence is an example of faulty parallelism. To correct the error, we can change the form of to sleep to sleeping. In is a particle, technically part of the phrasal verb. It isn't a preposition since there isn't an object. We drop the late because the other two objects don't have modifiers. Find the faulty parallelism in the sample sentence and try to think of how you would correct it. The sentence contains two predicate adjectives following the be verb was in describing the subject man. The third item in the series is a verb phrase. It doesn't fit the pattern of the other two. Sometimes we can't simply transform a word into a different part of speech. We may have to use a different word to maintain the parallel structure. Improvisational doesn't quite capture a personality trait as intelligent and quick-witted do, for example. Correlative conjunctions provide some special challenges in terms of parallelism, so let's look at them in some depth. These conjunctions come in pairs and connect words, phrases, and clauses that are grammatically equal. Here's a list of most of them. Take a few moments to read them aloud. They can be a little tricky because most of the pairs are composed of words that can be other parts of speech. Both, either and neither, for instance, can function as pronouns. They can also function as adjectives. Both are broken, and both battle droids are broken. Similarly, and, or, nor, but, by themselves, are coordinating conjunctions. So the rule relating to parallelism is that we use the same grammatical structure on both sides of correlative conjunctions. Once we locate the two conjunctions, we look carefully at the pattern that follows each of them. These patterns need to be the same. In this case, the modal will is in front of the correlative conjunction either. The pattern after the first conjunction, therefore, is linking verb and predicate nominative. The same pattern follows the second conjunction in the pair. So this sentence is parallel. Notice what happens when the modal auxiliary is placed in a different spot. Now the modal and main verb follow the first conjunction, so we have to repeat the modal after the second one to maintain parallelism. To check for parallelism, begin by finding the conjunctions. Either or are correlative. Then determine the grammatical structure of the items joined. We have a be verb and a predicate adjective following the first conjunction, and an independent clause with the direct object following the second. If the structures are not the same, revise to remedy the situation. Reword and or restructure the sentence to eliminate the pesky, faulty parallelism. Now both joined elements have the same structure, including a final adverb. On your notes handout, identify and correct any errors in parallelism. Pause the video while you work and restart it to check your answers. Whether or requires the same structure on each half, so we need to add a subject verb before the adverb of tomorrow. The coordinated conjunction and joins two predicate adjectives and a verb phrase with the direct object, so we need to work a little parallel magic. In this case, there isn't a straightforward way to change the part of speech, so we have to edit it a bit more. Using a semicolon to break up the information leads to further revision. Another set of correlative conjunctions and mismatched patterns. Action verb with machete as the direct object, and be verb with a predicate adjective. This isn't the only way to correct all the faulty parallelism in the sentence. As long as the structures joined by the conjunctions are the same after your edits, you're fine. If you have any doubts, make a note to ask your teacher to review your work. Before we move on to faulty comparison, a sort of parallel adjacent type of mistake, your teacher may assign you some additional electronic practice in detecting and correcting faulty parallelism. See you in the next video!